To begin, we need to either start a new custom drawing or open a template file. I'm going to open a template file from the startup screen by clicking on an 8.5 by 11 at 1 inch equals 20 feet in a portrait orientation. Here's my sheet of paper. Now this is a template, so we already have different layers set up with their original color assignments, line styles, widths, and scales. We can draw right on top of this new paper, or insert an image and design on top of the image. You can open the Insert Image command from the Draw menu, or by clicking on the toolbar icon. This opens the Image Insertion dialog box to allow you to locate the image and insert it into the drawing. Navigate to the folder where the image is located and click on the file name. The program will allow you to insert JPEG, bitmap, PNG, or TIFF images. You cannot insert a PDF into a drawing file. PDFs are not raster images. You will need to get a conversion utility to convert a PDF to a raster image format. You can find many conversion utilities on the internet, or you can print your PDF file, scan it, and save the scan as one of these formats for inserting it onto the drawing screen. I'll select survey.png and I will now click on the Select Image button to begin inserting this image onto the design screen. With the image inserted into the command, you can roll the scroll button on the mouse to zoom in or out. You can press and hold down the scroll button to pan or move the image around and you can click on the Zoom to Extents button to make the image fill the dialog box from top to bottom. We recommend that no one dimension be greater than 5,000 pixels. If the image is larger than the suggested size, you'll notice this warning message near the top of the dialog box. You can click on the button for more information, but basically the size of the image will need to be reduced or it can be drastically slow down the program and make the drawing become unstable. To change the size of the image, click on the Resize button. You can type a value in the text box, click on the up or down arrows, or click on the slider bar and drag it to the desired setting to adjust the percentage. You can also click in either the Width or Height text boxes, entering a new value for the pixels and press the Enter key on the keyboard. Once the image is set to the correct size, click on the Apply button to adjust the image. In this case, we're going to click on the Cancel button, because we may be able to lower the pixels by cropping the image. First, let's rotate it by clicking on either the counterclockwise or clockwise buttons, and then to crop the image, click on the Crop button. Click on a blue selection handle. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the handle to a new location. Release the handle once it's in the desired location. Basically, we're getting rid of portions of the image that are not required for this particular design. Once you've adjusted the area, click on the Apply button to crop the image. Notice that the warning message no longer appears, and the image has been reduced to less than 5,000 pixels for the height. If it was still larger than 5,000 pixels, we would need to resize the image. You may want to adjust the opacity of the image. This setting changes the transparency and makes the image appear fainter on the design screen, making your irrigation or landscape design elements appear bolder. You can type a value into the text box, click on the up or down arrows, or click on the slider bar and drag it to the desired setting to adjust the opacity setting. Now that we've made all the changes to the image, we must save it before it can be inserted into the drawing. Click on the Save Changes button and choose the location on your computer and change the file name if necessary. I'm going to just quickly save this one as Survey2. You can insert an image as either a background image or a floating image. A background image is typically a stationary image such as a plot plan or survey drawing that you'll either design on top of or trace over. A floating image is typically an image you'll move around on the design screen such as a company logo, a picture of plant material, or possibly a signature to go on a license seal. If you select a floating image, you'll need to enter the desired width for the image for the program to scale the image to the correct size during placement. You can always resize the image once it's on the design screen using the scale command from the edit menu. 
you can insert an image by referencing the file or by embedding the file into the drawing. If you reference the image file, the drawing file size will be smaller, but the image will not appear if you move or rename the image file. If you embed the file into the drawing, the drawing file size will increase, but you can move the drawing or send it to another user and the image will remain present. Click on the Insert Image button to insert the image into the drawing. The image will now appear on your mouse cursor. Drag the image to the desired location and click one time with the left mouse button to place the image on the screen. Immediately, it tells you that you need to scale the image. You will need to scale the image virtually every time, so go ahead and click on the Yes button to set points to a known distance apart. We can scale based on this 22.2 foot distance here, or we could use a building line, a sidewalk, or a driveway distance. Personally, I think it's best to use a larger distance, so in this case, we'll set a point at each end of the property line, measuring 154.76 feet. It's telling me that the distance is a different amount. We know that it's 154. So we'll enter 154.76 in the text box and click on the OK button. When I click on the button, watch the image. It changes and scales to the proper size. So now you're ready to begin designing. You can either trace over this image and then turn it off, or you can design directly on top of the image. The image is automatically placed on the background image layer and the layer will be locked to prevent you from moving the image during the design process. If this was a floating image, the image would have been inserted to the current drawing layer. If you need to move the image, unlock the layer and then you can select and move the image. Before you begin designing, we highly recommend that you lock the layer so you do not move the image during the design process. Once you've traced over the image and you no longer need it, you can click on the light bulb to turn the image off.